tendon pain. Why optimal exercise loads are the most important treatment for a tendon. Sport and exercise physicians commonly see patients suffering from tendon pain. Examples include tennis elbow or lateral elbow tendinopathy, biceps tendinopathy, hamstring, gluteal, patella, Achilles. There are so many tendons around the body that are liable to degeneration and disrepair. The rotator cuff is one of the most common areas of upper limb tendinopathy in the shoulder. Anatomy and pathology. Tendons are biological springs, storing and releasing mechanical energy to allow our muscles to move our bones. Under normal conditions, they're made up of densely packed collagen fibers in parallel and with this very, very specialized helical arrangement. When patients have mechanical overload or metabolic problems that damage their tendons, there's a continuum of pathology that occurs. And we're still learning about the complex relationship between the structural findings and the tendon pain. Jill Cook and Craig Purdom outlined the continuum model in 2016, whereby a tendon can transition anywhere along the continuum from a reactive tendon that's a bit inflamed to one with some disrepair that's capable of regenerating to a degenerated tendon where remodeling is unlikely. The most important treatment at any stage of tendinopathy is targeted exercise and load optimization to stimulate tendon growth and functional capacity. When there's persistence of symptoms for months, despite rehabilitation exercise, and there's a presence of neovessels that's seen on flow Doppler ultrasound, it's reasonable for patients to seek adjunctive treatments. These vessels are thought to represent neurovascular ingrowth. That is, the ingrowth of little blood vessels and nociceptive pain-causing nerve endings. And this is thought to contribute to the pain and sensitivity that goes with patients who have painful tendon. Management. Most tendon problems respond to mechanotherapy, which is just a fancy name for targeted rehabilitation that stimulates collagen and protein synthesis in the tendon. When we load a tendon, the mechanical signal is converted to a chemical signal. This is called mechanotransduction. And this increases the gene expression of proteins to lay down new tendon fibers. The brilliant group of researchers at La Trobe University who have dedicated their lives to tendon research have discovered some very important facts about tendons. Firstly, while there are no inflammatory cells inside worn tendons, there are inflammatory chemicals called cytokines and neuropeptides, which can cause pain, but also may respond to treatments that reduce these. Secondly, it's not the worn or degenerate regions that we have to focus on with rehabilitation. We generally should accept that those regions will not heal in months because of the very slow healing of tendons, and instead focus on strengthening the rest of the tendon. One analogy used here is to accept the hole in the donut, but make the rest of the donut bigger. And finally, there seems to be a disconnect between tendon structure and tendon pain. It's certainly not a direct correlation. So getting the right dose of exercise for the tendon to remodel and recover at the same time as having predictable and manageable pain levels is the main challenge. It's a little bit like blackjack where we're trying to get the optimal load into the tendon to promote this mechanotransduction without causing excessive pain or irritation. Generally, we start with very simple exercises called isometric holds, and these are very well tolerated and can actually reduce tendon pain whilst improving load tolerance. So now here's my summary of the latest practical application of the latest science on tendinopathy. In most cases, by the time a patient is seeing me as a specialist, they have persistent pain. They have tendon disrepair and degeneration. So this refers to the outer end of the continuum. See, we're constantly trying to provide the right stimulus for tendon capacity to increase. If we underdo it, 
we get inadequate stimulus and flatulent pain. And if we overdo it, we get excessive stimulus and fluctuant tendon pain again. When we get the load just right, not only does the tendon adapt, but the nervous system also adapts as we de-threaten it by exposure to loading. Now what this looks like clinically is predictable and manageable pain in response to exercise. We also need to ensure that we treat each individual person for their demands or their sports and the tendon in, is placed in context of the whole body movement. And all of this needs to be provided with the right building blocks for recovery or substrate so that it can be integrated to forming new tendon. This takes time, it takes patience. So you need to have trust in your rehabilitator and their processes. While over 90% of patients do well if this happens, if a patient can't make progress, that's the time to refer on for a sports physician's review of more complex sources of pathology. There are lots of examples of things that can be exceptions to tendinopathy and lead to ongoing pain. Calcific tendinopathies are one such example. Calcific tendinopathy is thought to represent a healing response from degenerative tendons with a powerful neurovascular ingrowth. These forms of tendinopathy can affect the rotator cuff, the Achilles, and they may respond to various adjunctive treatments for pain. But this is just one example of cases of tendinopathy that are not straightforward. In some recalcitrant cases where there's marked hypersensitivity and pain that impedes a patient's engagement in the appropriate rehab, adjunctive treatments such as shockwave therapy or injections can be useful. Injections should be done under ultrasound guidance to ensure minimal trauma to the tendon and maximal effectiveness. It's thought that all types of injections may have a beneficial effect by hydrodissecting or stripping some of the pathological nerve endings that infiltrate a degenerative tendon. But most clinicians would avoid corticosteroids as these tend to have atrophic effects on already slow tendon remodeling processes. However, just like any tool, cortisone is not all bad. If you need to reduce inflammation or tissue thickening, then cortisone is potentially a great tool, such as if there's bursitis or there's a scarred tendon pulley, for example, with the trigger finger. Now here is an example of a tendon stripping procedure of platelet-rich plasma shown with the Achilles tendon in cross-section so the Achilles looks like an oval structure. The needle enters from the side here and the injection hydrodissects the neurovascular ingrowth from the back of the Achilles tendon. Now this can be performed for other tendons with a similar effect and for a similar purpose. Lastly, I'll reiterate that any of these adjunctive treatments need to be one, accurately targeted, and two, combined with an individualized plan for rehabilitation. I hope you found this video useful. I create these educational videos to help empower patients by allowing them to understand their problem, treatment options, and the expected recovery. Please remember this lecture is for educational purposes only, does not constitute the giving of medical advice, and no patient-doctor relationship is formed.